Malibu Express is the first of the Andy Sedaris Triple B series. That's bullets, bombs and babes. Yeah! I'm Jay Harang and I talk about soft porn and stalker movies. You should subscribe. This is our hero, private investigator Cody Abilene, and he's pretty cool. He's got a cool car, a cool tash, cool sunglasses, and a cool briefcase holding a cool gun. Wow. But he's a terrible shot. Cody's best skill is definitely picking up hot chicks. Take this one for example, race car driver June Knockers. Cody can essentially have any woman he wants. No, Betty can. Cody lives on a boat at this marina, and the yacht club committee don't like this doorway thing he's made. You must get rid of it as soon as possible. He's not getting rid of it though, because it's there to honor the memory of his mum, who died when a train jumped the tracks. Hi, I'm May, and this is my friend Faye. May and Faye just happen to be staying on the boat nearby. They've seen Cody, and like every other woman, they find him irresistible. Oh, I see. While that's going on, we see this woman, Contessa Luciana. This is Douglas, the guy from the Yacht Club Committee. He seems to be some sort of government operative, and they're having problems with the Russians. Of course. The pesky Russians are trying to improve their technology by paying some people in the US tech industry to send them stuff. They've managed to trace the base of one of these major operations to the home of Luciana's friend. Lady Lillian Chamberlain. They need to get someone in there to find out what's going on, and Douglas has decided there's only one man for the job. Cody Abilene. Yeah. So Cody gets a page from Douglas telling him to go meet Luciana. He buys her a dress, they go out dancing, and then they bang. She convinces him to take the job, and on his way there, he runs into the Buffington family. They're basically mutants who for some reason are obsessed with beating Cody in a car race. This happens a few times, but it's repetitive, boring, and irrelevant to the story, so I'm ignoring it. So here we are at Lady Chamberlain's house. Cody will be staying here for a few days, and this is Lady Lillian. I just know there's something going on in this house behind my back. And she's right. Here's who lives at the house with her. Her nephew, Stuart. His wife, Anita. Her niece, Liza. The chauffeur, Shane. And her maid, Marion. A friend of Shane's. Stuart's wife, Anita, is having an affair with Shane, the chauffeur. But at dinner, she's obviously unable to resist Cody. She's only human, after all. He's not only really good looking, by the way. He's also hilarious. Well, what do you usually make for dinner? Reservations. (laughs) Very good. After dinner, Cody goes to meet his friend Beverly. She's a police officer and they go for a workout twice a week. Cody likes to perv on all the women at the gym and these two don't seem too impressed. Take a look at that chump over there. Back at the Chamberlain place, Shane gets into the shower with Liza. They start going at it, but all Shane needs is a photo. Damn you, Shane, you son of a bitch! Stuart's gay, by the way, and he's interested in Shane too. It seems Shane likes to record all of his encounters. Check out this high-tech rig he's got set up in the pool house to film himself with Anita. Very impressive indeed. Next day, Liza asks Cody to drive her to see her friend Jonathan Harper. She's investing in his computer business. While they're there, these three come in and start sexually harassing Liza. It's the two guys from the gym and Mauser from Police Academy 2 and 3. Call it. The lady's an investor. Yeah, guys, save your sexual harassment for strangers and low-level employees. Cody decides to leave and Mauser makes this weird noise. (laughs) Cody's objection to sexual harassment doesn't go down well with Jonathan. See to it that his ass leaves these premises. So on his way home, they follow him. He pulls the car over and there's this fight. Then Mauser destroys his car, so Cody has to walk home. On the way back, Cody stops at a car lot to pick up a new car. Luckily, there's a hot woman working there who, like everyone else, is unable to resist Cody, so I assume he gets a discount. Back at the house, Cody overhears Shane trying to blackmail Anita with the sex tapes he made to get her to pay his $30,000 gambling debts, but she refuses. You little whore. So Shane tries to blackmail Stuart for the money. He says he'll expose him as a gay transvestite if he doesn't pay, but Stuart refuses too. At Lady Chamberlain's charity party that evening, Shane's still trying to blackmail people as his bookmaker is there to collect. Cody is hanging around with Luciana, and Anita and Liza are talking about Maid Marion. Did you hear that she got raped this afternoon? What? By two homosexuals. What? No. <laughs> 
One held her down and the other one did her hair. What? <laughs> That's nice. After the party, someone comes in, kills Shane and takes the tapes. Somehow, he has a chance to get a photo of the killer before he dies. What? Anyway, Cody and Luciana find his body the next morning. Cody's like, you get out of here. You've got a plane to catch. I'll deal with this. When Cody goes into Shane's room to snoop around, he sees that the pictures Shane took of him and Anita are missing. He also sees blood on the camera, so decides he needs to see what's on it. Maid Marin is watching Cody through the window. Cody has asked the family to gather by the pool before the police arrive. For some reason, he calls Sally's sexy phone and lip service. And of course... Cody, I want you so bad. Brilliant. All he does is gets her to call the police. Did he forget the police's number? Seems like a pointless phone call to me. Anyway, when the police turn up, it's Lieutenant Arledge with Cody's friend Beverly. Cody Beverly, I should have known you'd be involved in this. Why should he have known? That's absurd. Lieutenant Arledge has brought an envelope with him. It was sent to the police station and addressed to Lady Chamberlain. It's photos of Anita shagging Shane. It's what we call hard evidence. Yeah. Maid Marin is feeding information about the case to Jonathan and his friend. Cody and Beverly look around Shane's house for clues and then they bang. Then these two pull up. I got all day for this. Okay. They've got guns and they're here to kill Cody. So they hide in the shower. Presumably so that Beverly's white t-shirt can get wet and we can all see her tits. Are you serious? Yes. Cody shoots one, but he misses. Luckily, Beverly can shoot, so he's dead. Same happens to the next one. As far as Cody and Beverly know, the only person who knew they were going there was Lady Chamberlain. So Beverly calls Lieutenant Arledge and tells him what's happened. When Cody gets home, Mauser and the gym people have come to get the film from Shane's camera. Cody shoots Mauser in the ear, but they get away. The next morning, Beverly calls Cody to tell him that Stuart has been arrested for Shane's murder. While his two neighbours are trying to shag him, he calls Sally again and asks to be put through to June Knockers. Cody, does she give better lip service than I do? Do me a favour. He needs June's friend Rodney, the photographer, to develop this film for him. Maid Marin reports to the baddies that Cody and Beverly are on their way to see June, so they follow them. They get the film developed and are about to leave with the photos, but the goons are here. Cody escapes with June in her race car, but Mauser and the goons follow them in someone else's helicopter. Driving has become difficult for Cody, because June, who as we all know is one of many women who finds Cody irresistible, has no interest in escaping the bad guys. She just wants to get pumped. What a slut. Mauser gets the helicopter to land, and when the pilot leaves them there, he starts shooting at it. But then... God, <laughs> So the car crashes and they need to escape on foot. This chase goes on and on and on. Cody only has one bullet left and he can't hit a moving target. So June has a plan. Hey, look at these! <sighs> yeah. Cody takes that guy's gun and shoots the other one with it. As the car doesn't work, they need to get a ride in this mobile home. But how are they going to make it stop? That's right, June flashes the driver. Yeah. God bless you, sir. God certainly blessed you, ma'am. After he drops June off, Cody decides it's time to take down Jonathan and his computer friends. Beverly is still alive and advises Cody not to go on his own, but he ignores her. There's a party at the computer company. Liza is there, and Jonathan, for some reason, is showing videos of her sister Anita and Shane having sex on the TVs. All right, everybody, this party's over. Now move out! Cody thinks Liza has killed Shane because it's her in the photo Shane took while he was being killed. So Liza and Jonathan are arrested, but Cody's got it all wrong. He gets everyone on the boat and explains it was actually Luciana who killed Shane. Lift the red cloth and you will see how I disguise myself as Liza. Why? He was Jonathan Harper's courier to the Russians. Well, that makes sense. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.